It's a nasal cleanse. Yeah, they're great. Can we talk about set theory? I'd never be, I'd never willingly submit myself to it, but can we talk about some set theory? I'm getting pretty grossed out in this class. Talk about needles. I did have an appetite. I was getting hungry. Where are you going to YouTube and just look up? So let's talk about set theory. Set theory is a very useful branch of mathematics for engineers. In probability theory, we use the language of set theory. So that's why before we really get into probability theory, we need some set theory. Uh, you guys are probably going to be familiar with most of this notation and most of these concepts. Um, just think about those diagrams that you saw. Venn diagrams. Yeah, okay, so think Venn diagrams. That must have been easy because diagrams, right? Okay. A set is a collection of objects. Set theory gives us a way to describe these collections. Often the objects in a set are numbers or sets of numbers. However, a set could represent collections of zebras and trees and hairballs. For instance, here are some sets. So, are we going to get the name of the set? Uh, you guys, we can give names to the sets. Yeah. Okay, let's do that. Here's the first set. You have to see it before you name it. These are attempts at braces, but I get lazy and then just make them squiggles. <laughs> I know how to do braces, I just don't like to do braces. There, here's a set. Uh, that's a pie. It's a mushroom? Could be a mushroom, though. So we could name it if we want, but it is a set. Um, uh, yeah, we could do, here was one that I liked. We could do a set that contains a zebra named Calvin. And I wrote these notes before this was so topical, but I stuck with it. A burnt Cheeto. And then finally, you could have a set that contains other sets as elements. Oh, man. Yeah, you could have a set with a hypodermic needle. <laughs> and a skull and crossbones. Honey, our, our notes actually got into Korean today. They just didn't look it. <laughs> Etc. <laughs> and then, y you know, stuff and acorns. <coughs> Ooh, acorn squash are so good. Yeah. No, wait, acorn squash? No, no. Only if you put sausage in. Ooh, Spaghetti squash, good. yeah, but no, it's the, um, is it butternut squash? Oh, butternut. They're like the green and yellow striped ones. Don't get me started. Oh. No, butternut squash are like yellow. What you're thinking of the acorn ones? They're green. They have like orange, some like orange spots on them. It's unclear at this point what kind of squash you're talking about, but the, there are good squash out there. Delicious. Don't despair. I used to think squash was just kind of like not that great, but it can be good. Oh my god, I had last night, 
I had chanterelle mushrooms sauteed in yeah in in uh, uh, ro rosemary from our yard. From our yard. What? It's so good. <laughs> sauteed. A field is a set with special structure. Okay? It's very special. The structure is provided by the addition and multiplication operators and their inverses, subtraction and division. The quintessential example of a field is the set of real numbers, denoted R, that fancy double R, like the double R diner from Twin Peaks. Great show which admits these operators, making it a field. The reals are the complex numbers C, the integers Z, and the natural numbers N are the fields we typically consider. Set membership is the belonging of an object to a set. It is denoted with the symbol, we usually, will see, when we read the symbol, we'll say in. In. Or we could say, is an element of, um, which is a little longer, more of a mouthful, but if we just say in, it's a little quicker. Uh, for element x and set x, we would write that x is an element of x. The element x is an element of the set X. You don't. If you were to write what big X is equal to, so say big X was equal to, say, a collection of integers, like 1, 2, 3, then we would write 1, 2, 3. So we wouldn't write the brackets around X because that would be a set that contains the set x as an element. But the small x would be in the set. Y yeah, yeah. So like maybe, maybe for instance, little x is equal to 2. In which case it would be in there. If you have x as a big x as an element of another set, you have a setception. Okay, <laughs> just for you. For instance, we might say that seven is an element of the set, one, seven, two. Or we might say that four is not an element of, I know, I didn't even define that, but we learned, out what, it, we learned what it means just from the context, of the set one, seven, two, because four didn't show up in there anyway. Or we might declare that A is a real number by stating That's awesome. Uh, I switched, apparently, from A to X in one line. <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, X. X is a real number by stating X is an element of the reals. Okay. Like you guys never have typos, okay? Yeah. Set operations <laughs> can be used to construct new sets from established sets. We'll consider a few common set operations now. The union, which is denoted with this U-like symbol. Convenience, yes. The union of sets is the set containing all the elements of the original sets. No repetitions allowed. No repetitions allowed in any set. We don't, we don't let a set contain two identical elements. There's no such thing as two identical elements in a set. Every element is unique. OK, so uh, the union of sets A and B is denoted A union B. For instance, 
let A be the set 1, 2, 3, and B be the set negative 1, 3. Then, if we wanted to write A union B, what would we have? Great. And does the order of these matter? No. <laughs> but thank you for your response. Um, it, it doesn't matter in a set. If, if it was a vector or an array, the order would matter. Um, or sometimes people use, and it's, it's a misnomer to call it an ordered set. Um, sets aren't ordered, so uh, if you want an order, you have to have a, uh, another type of, of structure. So you can have an indexing structure. There are all kinds of, of structures that can help you have order, but sets in of themselves, you can, you can move them around. There's no specific order to them. So 1 comma 2 equals 2 comma 1. Okay, so that's a union. And that was, you guys remember the Venn diagram where it was like, here's set A, here's set B. Here's the union of sets A and B. Boom. <coughs> Venn diagram. The intersection, which is just like union but upside down, of sets, is a set containing the elements common to all <coughs> the original sets. The intersection of sets A and B is denoted A intersect B. For instance, let A be 1, 2, 3, and B be 2, 3, 4. Then A intersects B is equal to what? 2, 3. Two, three. Wonderful. What does B intersect A? Same thing. If two sets have no elements in common, the intersection is the empty set, which is denoted with this circle with a line through the middle, um, which is not phi, which is subtly different. <laughs> Hopefully, from context, you'll be able to tell the difference. Uh, it's, it, it, in the typography, it, it looks a lot easier to tell the difference. But uh, The unique set with no elements. The set difference of two sets, A and B, is the set of elements in A that aren't also in B. It's denoted with this slash, so A minus B. For instance, let A be the set 1, 2, 3, and B be the set 2, 3, 4. Then A minus B equals what? One. Because pretty much what you do is you start with the elements of A and you just take away anything that shows up in B. So two and three both show up in B. Take them away. What is B minus A? Somebody was already thinking ahead. Uh, yeah, so B minus A is 4. Good. You guys are fast. It's almost as if you've seen it before. Is that, would you say that's actually B minus A? Or is it, is that dash, it's, it's, it's a big slash, so I'm just curious. It's just yeah, so we actually do say minus. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, you could say, to be more explicit, you could say set minus. There are some people who actually write minus, like the subtraction symbol there, but that's generally discouraged. Yeah, because I was, I was, that's why it's the confusion. I was like, wait, did you write minus? Yeah, a lot of programming languages will just let you use the minus symbol. But Thank you for the question. Sure. A subset, which is denoted with this symbol, it's just like all kinds of different iterations on this, this U shape. Okay. Uh, 
Good. So a subset of a set is a set, the elements of which are contained in the original set. Okay. If the two sets are equal, one is still considered a subset of the other, which is kind of weird. That's like saying if you had a collection of 12 eggs and you're like, can you grab me a subset of those eggs? Somebody <laughs> just brought them all to you. You'd be like, I mean, you're right, but wasn't exactly what I was intending you to do. OK. Uh, all right. We call a subset that is not equal to the other set a proper subset, which is like if I was like, hey, we have a set of 12 eggs over there. Can you get me a proper subset of those eggs? And then you'd have to bring me 11 or fewer eggs. You couldn't bring me all the eggs. Could we bring you the unique solution zero? <laughs> it is. The, it is. So a proper subset. You could bring me uh, the empty set. Yeah. yeah. That is what the empty set would sound like, I think, if it was a sound. So, for instance, let A be this set and B be this set. Then, we could say that B is a subset of A. We could also say that B is a proper subset of A. And we could also say, I mean, we could say a few things more, but another thing that's interesting to say, so that A is a subset of A, which is true, but not interesting to me. Might be to some people. Who's to say what's interesting? I'm not, I'm not here to judge. Uh, needles are just scary as shit. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I've never watched that. Needles are horrifying. I don't know why. Like, I mean, like, objectively, I'm like, not bad. I think it's because. I watched my mom pass out giving blood when I was like two or something. And I was like stranded like at this place with my mom and she like had passed out <laughs> from a needle. And I think that that is probably the start of the phobia around Wait, needles. So she passed out from the needle and not from giving blood. No, she passed out. Well, it's not clear. I don't know. I'm really not sure why she passed out, but. I think the association was there no matter what. <laughs> I, w I didn't wait for my uh, tr trauma uh, uh, um, to be real or not based on what people explained <laughs> the situation to be. I was like, wait, am I traumatized right now because of needles? Or, And they were like, you're two. <laughs> <laughs> wait, that's how you were talking at two? <laughs> it's been a whole long life. It's funny, my, my, so I'm Canadian, well, I used to be Canadian, long story, but. <laughs> Wait, get out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hold on, we have issues now. <laughs> we'll have to talk about that some other time, but uh, Canadian relatives of mine, so Canada, you know, is like rather British, right? You know, like more than else. Well, the right, but it's it's uh, uh, actually a Commonwealth nation, a British know, Commonwealth know, nation. They have Queen of England on their shit, you know. Okay. Um, they. So I, uh, when I was an adult, I talked to some cousins that I hadn't talked to since I was a kid, and they were like, "Yeah, we used to like." make fun of you because you spoke with a British accent when you were a kid. And I was like, what? How is that possible? And also, how did it turn into a Southern California accent when I lived in Idaho? That's not a very nice compliment. Are you from SoCal? No, no, I'm, I'm trying to revert back to my Canadian accent. Ah! <laughs> that's pretty good. Oh, that, was, that, was <laughs> that was actually a pretty good. You did not catch that one. 
Well, I compliment you. On your pun. If I had one, I would give you a compliment. You might have some <laughs> puns. All right. So the complement of a subset is a set of elements of the original set that aren't in the subset. Whew. I know, right? So for instance, if B is a subset of A, then the complement of B denoted B line over it, <laughs> B bar, we could say, um, you could write as being, so B bar is equal to A minus B. So B is a subset of A, so the complement of B is A minus B. Let me draw a Venn diagram to help. This set is set A. This set is a subset, is set B. And it sort of looks like a, like. It looks like an eight ball. Can it looks I like eggs. It's like an eight ball. Oh, so it's like egg. a slice egg I made the other day. So it's B bar in the area of the I have an idea of, a, of what, it, what it looks like, but I'm going to wait till the video is off. Um, <laughs> so A, set A, set B. Complement of B is this stuff over here. Complement of B. I didn't learn to color inside the lines, but... That's because I was homeschooled. Okay. All right, guys. That's all I got for today. Well, I have more, but we don't have time to get there. All right. See you Wednesday. <laughs>